In this video, I'd like to describe two different ways that you can beat the summer heat. The first method is aimed at the people who both like woodworking and gardening. What you can do is build this enormous trellis all the way around the area you wish to cool down. Then head out to the nursery and pick yourself up a wisteria plant. With a lot of monthly and sometimes weekly coaching from you, it will grow onto the trellis then fan out. The amount of leafy vegetation this plant can produce is phenomenal, but every one of those leaves likes to absorb the sunlight. And the result, when you're standing in this gazebo, it feels like you're in an air-conditioned room. You do want to be sure to not let the wisteria grow onto your gazebo. I've seen this particular wisteria shatter a 2x4 as it grew around the board. If you should decide that the 10 to 15 years that it'll take the wisteria to establish itself is just a little too long of a wait, you have a second alternative. And here it is. Head on down to your local Harbor Freight store and pick yourself up a mesh weave tarp. This tarp is specifically designed to provide cooling for patios, garden areas, and even truck beds or trailer beds. What it does is block out 60 to 70 percent of the sun's rays, yet you can still see through it. I've been using these tarps for two years now, and I must say this claim has to be accurate because they do a great job at blocking the heat. They are UV resistant, which I would personally expect, since their intended use is to block the sun. And finally, on the edge, they have a 3-inch wide web, reinforced hem, double-stitched and sealed with grommets every 2 feet and at the corners. That description makes it sound indestructible. And having grommets every 2 feet actually is pretty awesome for hanging it. But in reality, the super reinforced hem is the weak link in this tarp. It doesn't take a whole bunch of wind before it'll rip. And when it does rip, it'll be the corner grommet that goes. So, when you're hanging the tarp, do whatever you can to prevent too much pressure from being put onto the corner grommets. Oh, and each tarp, when you open it, has this nice little warning in it. Apparently, if you use this tarp in the state of California, it may cause birth defects. So if you plan on having kids in California, don't use this tarp. With all that said, I still think this is a great product. It comes in different sizes. You have 8x10, 10x12, 8x16, and finally 12x19. Before you leave the store, head on over to the bungee cord aisle. Oh, I'm sorry, Harbor Freight doesn't call them bungee cords. They call them elastic stretch cords. Anyway, this 20-piece mini elastic stretch cord kit comes in handy for hanging the tarp. When you get home, pull up the internet, and you'll want to order some pull tape, sometimes called mule webbing. Nope, no idea why they call it that. This stuff is remarkable for a couple of reasons. With a pull rating of 1,250 pounds, it'll tolerate just about any wind load you're going to put on it. Unlike ropes and strings, which will stretch when they're put under pressure, this stuff doesn't. You pull it tight, it stays tight. Since it's flat, as you'll see later in this video, it provides considerably more surface area to support your tarp, making your tarp less prone to damage. And the tape is pre-lubricated. This means once you take it off the spool, it's not prone to turn into a giant bunch of knots like an extension cord or rope does. I once had a trash bag full of 2,000 feet of this webbing just piled into it. It only took me about half an hour to untangle it. No knots. Now I'm imagining that many of you are asking why I had 2,000 feet of this stuff in a trash bag. The reason is, there's places where you can find this stuff where it's free. Drive around until you see a utility company installing new underground wiring. They use this pull cord to pull the new wire through the pipes. Then they just throw the cord away after one use. Be polite, go up and ask them if you can have that trash bag full of cord. They'll be more than happy to give it to you, most likely. Okay, we have all the parts we need. Let's start installing this thing. When we're finished, this is what it'll look like from the deck. And this is what the birds will see as they fly overhead. The installation at my house is remarkably simple, since I built gazebos at each end of my deck. Our goal here is to install support lines every two feet, the entire width of the tarp that you're going to be putting up. If you didn't happen to build gazebos on each end of your deck, there is a way you can still do this. Head on down to your local country farm and feed store and pick up some 10-foot top rail posts. These are poles that are 3 inches in diameter and 10 feet long. Follow my link above for installing temporary posts into the ground. To make the posts easily removable from summer to summer, I added a pipe. Before backfilling the dirt around the pipe, make sure your post is plumb in the vertical position. Throw a couple small rocks into the pipe. This will keep the end of your post out of the dirt. Since your poles are 10 feet long, you'll have 2 feet in the ground and 8 feet above ground. This will give you more than enough headroom for people to walk underneath your shade tarp. And since the poles are removable, 
Like I've done here, you can remove the tall poles in the winter and put in shorter poles for other projects. Now that your poles are installed, head back over to the house. Along the eave, you want to install eye hooks. This will give you the second side of tie-offs that you'll need to install your shade. Now it's imperative when you install your support lines that they be very tight. To do this, you want to learn two new knots, the square knot and the trucker's hitch. At one end, you install the square knot. This is because if it's tied properly, no matter how much pressure you put onto it, you can undo this knot later. Let's see if I can give you a better view on how to tie the square knot. The other end of your support line is where you'll use your trucker's hitch. As the name implies, trucker's hitch, this knot can put some serious pressure on tightening a rope. When I do the final pull, look how tight this line becomes. Okay, let me use a bigger rope to see if I can show you how to tie this knot. First, you make a loop. Grab the free end of the rope, that's the loose one over by the pole, and pull it through the loop. When you're ready to undo this knot, that loop just pulls right out by yanking on it. Okay, let's retie the loop. Grab the free end that's wrapped around the pole and feed it through the loop. Take it back around the pole one more time. And pull. Unfortunately, since I'm using my workbench and it'll fall over if I pull real hard, take my word for it, you can pull really hard. And then tie it off. For you scientists out there, this knot gives you a 3 to 1 mechanical advantage. You've effectively built a pulley system. So the next time you need to tie down a load on your truck, remember this knot. And for the skeptics out there, let me show you how easy it is to undo the line even when it's been tightened. Oh, let me throw in a bonus knot. If you're finding your line is slipping on the pole, you want to use a clove hitch. The clove hitch will not slide up and down a pole. Oh, and incidentally, if you want to build an aircraft, this is the same knot you're going to use when you're tying wire bundles together. Now that you have your support lines run, lay your tarp across the top of them. Using panduits on two sides of the tarp, secure the grommets to your attach points, whether they be the eye hooks you put in or your end support line. This is where your bungee cords, oh, I mean stretch cords, sorry about that Harbor Freight. Anyway, stretch cords come into play. Attach a cord to every grommet, pulling it tight, then hook it to an attach point. In this case, I ran an extra support line far enough away from the tarp to provide some decent tension on that cord. This will serve two purposes. It'll keep your tarp tight, making it look good, no sagging, and if the wind should happen to pick up, the cords will stretch a little bit, preventing your grommet from being ripped out. Now, the first time you do this, it will take some time to set it up. Cutting all your support lines to length, installing your eye hook, digging post holes, but it'll be well worth it. This deck used to be unbearable in August. Now, it's enjoyable. After your initial setup, every setup after that will go very quickly. Finally, let me show you one more thing you can do. If you have windows that the sun just beats into, take some scissors to your tarp and cut it up. Staple it to the outside of the window. Gone are the days of putting tin foil on the inside of a hot window or hanging a blind across the outside of it. And when you're inside looking out, you can't even barely tell it's installed. Except for the fact that you won't feel any heat coming through the window. Well, I think I'm done with this video. Uh, thanks for watching.